Hey everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. Happy Friday, everybody. Today we are going to take a look at the Sun's conjunction with Jupiter. Uh, this is a really important conjunction because uh, anytime that the Sun conjoins with another planet, it's the beginning of a new synodic cycle. Uh, this is going to happen about once yearly for the Sun and Jupiter um, because every time the Sun goes through the full zodiac takes about a year. Once a year, the sun's going to cycle through whatever sign Jupiter is in and conjoin it. And so, you know, about once a year, we get this moment where Jupiter is being reborn. So I'm going to show you the real-time clock. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to give you uh, just a picture of what this um, looks like. So here is last year's. I want to start with last year's. This is about January. So it's a little over a year in this case, but uh, you get the synodic conjunction between the sun and Jupiter happening about January 28th last year. So this, I'm just going to give you an example of how this works. Whenever the there is a synodic conjunction slash Kazemi, the planet is at the heart of the sun and is being reborn. Uh, it might be with Venus and Mercury, it could be starting its rebirth as a morning star or maybe moving toward the evening star position. But that, that conjunction usually marks the um, beginning point or uh, uh, turning point of the cycle. A little bit different with the superior versus inferior planets would be Mars, Jupiter, Saturn versus, say, Mercury and Venus. But the gist of it is that the conjunction usually means that there's a reset happening. So when you have the synodic conjunction of these two planets, in a sense, Jupiterian thing. It's like the new moon for Jupiter. So you have like a seed that's being planted um, when it comes to the Jupiterian significations. Now, broadly speaking, Jupiter is going to represent growth, abundance, opportunity, benefic or benevolent influences, what we're inspired by, some, some connection to things like religion, higher learning, our hopes and wishes for the future, um, advantageous or opportunistic uh, circumstances that come up. Uh, and often there's a sense of ambition that's connected with Jupiter as well, especially when the sun and Jupiter can join. It can also be a moment where there's just a sense of empowerment and success in the air when Jupiter and the sun can join. The, it's like the king and the emperor, two planets that represent power and strength and authority in, in all, uh, you know, it, if we're being hopeful, then hopefully that expression of authority is also just and noble and good and, um, and, and things like that. And it doesn't necessarily have to be masculine either. The, the, the feminine authority can be expressed, especially as we have one right now in Pisces, a sign that exalts Venus. Regardless, Jupiter's conjunction uh, with the sun. Let's, let me just show you what this looked like in my own chart, uh, and I'll show you exactly what was coming up. So I'm, I'm going to actually put this into the 10th house. This is where Aquarius lands in my chart, which is my career house. So um, when this happened last year, as the synodic cycle got reset, I was formulating and launching um, a brand new course called Readings and Passages, which started this fall. Um, and so... What's amazing about that is here it landed in my career house and the reset, the new moon seed was the planting of a new curriculum that I had developed, a new program and a new um, offering professionally. So it's just a simple example, but if you take this through the 12 houses, which we are going to do in a minute, you'll see, you can see where that would have happened. So if you look back at late January last year and go, okay, there was this, this seed with future growth opportunity, kind of the benevolent qualities of Jupiter planting a seed in my life somewhere. And where were they? And look at how they've grown and gestated since. Um, now we're starting a new cycle. So let's fast forward the clock up to today. Here you can see in the sky at the moment, as I'm making this, here's the sun about to conjoin Jupiter. Now, I'm going to move this. I'm we're actually recording this on Thursday. Let's for, fast forward this to uh, Friday. Um, so as we're watching this, it's Friday. Here's Jupiter and the sun moving through the conjunction. Now the sun is at the 14th degree. And if we fast forward it to into Saturday, March 5th, the sun has passed over. So the March 4th and 5th is the conjunction of the sun and Jupiter. Now you're going to look at that in the whole sign house of Pisces. 
remember that this is a very promising uh, conjunction. You have a well-dignified Jupiter uh, going moving toward a conjunction with Neptune later in April. And I mentioned at the it, with the astrology of March that this hopeful signature at the beginning of the cycle, look at this similar, this Sun-Jupiter conjunction happening in a pretty close sextile with Uranus. The new moon, of course, was sextile to Uranus. So breakthroughs, hopeful, confident, expansive, good news. Okay. But between now and the end of March, Venus is also enclosed by the malefics starting up pretty soon here by March 6th. So maybe there's a little bit of a delay or some ups and downs that we have to get through between now and about the middle of April. But the way things are moving, there's a very hopeful, expansive, dreamy, fertile kind of growth oriented quality. Okay. So that's what's coming through. That's what's building and developing. And so looking at that whole sign house where uh, you find the Jupiter sun conjunction, it's going to give you a sense of what kinds of topics are um, in the process of growing and, and gestating probably pretty positively overall. So that's what I'm going to do now is I just want to take Jupiter, the sun Jupiter conjunction and um, put it through generally all of the houses. And I'll give you some stories from people that I've been working with lately as well, who have this, you know, where I've already seen some stories coming in about how this is shaping up because it's already pretty close to happening in the past week or so. I've been hearing a lot more stories that are reflective of this transit. So you start with Aries, it's in the 12th house. This is a funny one because it, it feels to me like the holy and sacred light emerging in the shadows. That's the, that's the phrase that kind of comes to mind for Aries rising right now. This Sun-Jupiter conjunction in the 12th is like a light in a dark place. So I think about that, something, some awareness is growing in the unconscious. So where your blind spot lies, there some understanding and healing is emerging. That to me is <clears throat> maybe the most specific thing I could say about this benefic looking conjunction in your 12th house if you're in Aries. If you're a Taurus rising, and I am, uh, you've got Jupiter and the sun in the 11th. Interestingly, I'm in the process of collaborating with some friends in India, and we're uh, using some of our Kickstarter funds to uh, help build a space where we can lead retreats there. That's all forming right now. And that's very 11th house allies, groups, friends, community. Um, so I suspect that's probably what that's about for me. But the topic of groups, friends, allies, uh, community, and things like that um, look really good if you're a Taurus, Taurus rising, I should say. If you're a Gemini, this synodic conjunction between Jupiter and the, and the sun is happening in your 10th house of career. So what seed is being planted around career? Remember I said last year for me, that synodic conjunction that happened in my 10th house coincided with developing a new program that of course is also a business offering. So now uh, go forward to cancer rising and the synodic conjunction is happening in the ninth house, place of the higher mind, religion, spirituality, uh, learning, and so forth. So there's something growing in that area. If you're a cancer rising, watch for that. If you are a Leo rising, then this is taking place in your eighth house. And I would look at this a little bit differently than any other eighth house read, purely because the eighth house with such a benefic looking signification tends to yield benefits from other people, meaning good things, resources, collaboration, benefits that are coming in through other people. Sometimes it's like inheritance or it's a good business negotiation or a partner or a spouse is getting a raise. Um, but I would look for good resources or helpful things coming in through other people, or maybe alleviating yourself of some kind of debt or burden that you owe to someone or something else. For Virgo risings, the energy of the synodic conjunction is uh, this reset of the synodic cycle is coming into your seventh house of marriage and love. I like the idea of love growing in that area of life right now, or, or developing, or maybe even something good happening for a partner. If you're a Libra rising, then we're looking at the synodic cycle uh, resetting in the sixth house. I would look at that in terms of things that you care passionately about, service, healing, passionate engagement, fighting a good fight, a mission-driven orientation, or maybe healing or soothing some kind of conflict or illness. Um, if you're 
uh, Scorpio rising, we're putting this in the fifth house, which is a place of uh, romance, love, beauty, creativity, children. I could see pregnancy as one possible signification here, but also an emphasis on joy and what constitutes pleasure. Uh, always an important question with that fifth house. If you're a Sag rising, this falls into your fourth house, home, family, living environment, generational changes happening, maybe uh, family karma constellating differently or uh, births in the family, moves, purchasing home, uh, purchasing a new home. So something cooking around home and family, if you're a Sag rising, a seed being planted. If you are a Capricorn rising, this has to do with the mind and the environment around you, taking on some kind of benefic, emotional, uplifting, redeeming quality. That's very expressive and emotive. It's driven by maybe a kind of a passionate idealism. There's a sense of needing to communicate one's beliefs. Uh, I, I like this as, especially for caps who can, you know, are pretty earthy and sometimes a little Saturnine. I like this as being a healing of the mind. Um, now, also expressing or communicating something comes to mind. If you're an Aquarius rising, this conjunction falls in your second house of money and finances, income and expenditures, resources. Something's growing there that looks pretty good, but you know, you'd be a little bit careful of maybe buying things that are big or expensive or extravagant. Finally, if you are a Pisces rising, this is in your first house, which means we're talking about a seed being planted that moves toward actualization in terms of the body, health, psychology, personality. You're growing as a person or maybe needing to actual self-actualize, as they say, by starting something new. It tends to be a place of inceptions and beginnings. So those are the things that I'm seeing if we take this conjunction through all 12 signs. Um, I think... Again, I think that this is a very promising Sun-Jupiter conjunction because of how powerful Jupiter is in its own sign, and because next month Jupiter conjoins with Neptune, both of which have a feeling of redemption, faith, upliftment, maybe a little ungrounded at times, or um, maybe a little idealistic. But um, in general, I think sometimes we we suffer from a lack of those things, not an overabundance of them. So uh, hopefully this will be something that supports us and we, we feel um, feel the wind at our back a little bit. Anyway, that's those are my thoughts on the Sun-Jupiter conjunction. Uh, also just watch for that sense of people who have wisdom or authority, Sun-Jupiter conjunctions. Sometimes you're also going to see transfer of power or like fathers or authority figures. It could be female too, but like people with some authority or stature somehow being really important right now for better or worse. Uh, weirdly, sometimes Jupiter passing over the sun will mean the passing of like an, an older person or a leader too. Sometimes you actually see death of such figures, weirdly. That's also because Jupiter has that connotation of the new God who replaced the old God. And so sometimes when Jupiter comes over the sun, there will be some transfer of power or some replacing or um, change of like leadership or something like that. So it's just another random thing to watch for, I guess. Anyway, that's what I have for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend and that this gives you a few good things to think about. Use the hashtag grabbed. If you have any stories about the sun and Jupiter, we collect those stories and have some episodes where we share them. If you don't want to share it in the comments section, email us grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. That's what I've got for today. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.